Garita Lan yewe inakuwa kama semi arid kwa joto ni mpaka upande mamiti mbele ya nyumba yako kupata shade. From the perspective of uh, Garissa, which is an Arenda semi arid district, we have experienced a lot of problems which are associated with the climate a change. We've been experiencing droughts, we've been experiencing uh, floods, and all these come with a lot of loss in terms of uh, livestock and other assets or infrastructure that is in place at the county level. Because by that time, what was the church? Mifugo was the church. Overgrazing was the Mifugo ilikuwa hata kama hakuna mvua ile nyazi ilimea wakati ile nyingine ndio ilikuweko sasa hiyo hakuna so by that time kuwa na mifugo nyingi ilikuwa mzuri na ulikuwa unaheshimika katika jamii but nowadays iko ukwame nyingi watu wamekuwa nyingi so mifugo nyingi kuweka ni ngumu hakuna pale ya kulisha sasa kabla ya hapo watu walipotesa mifugo yao na hao kukua wanajua watafanya kitu gani wamefuzwa mambo ya mashamba unaweza kubata moto bila mifugo amebatu juice ingine kujitavutia pesa so amerudi kwa shamba anapanda tomato watermelon nini na nini kitu ile inaweza kufunwa haraka anapata pesa anaweza kupanda kama mahindi hiyo ni chakula yake nyumbani anajiwekea mifugo zamani ilikuwa inakufa mtu alikuwa anachunga tu baka anaona gombe zake imemalizika katika hiyo hali ya anga wanapatiwa mtu akiona tu ukame anakuja anauza ngombe yake anaweka eh, account anaweza kuri, kufanya restocking Badaya wakati iko nini iko mvua I participate in developing uh, environmental action plans both at county level and at the national level These uh, environmental action plans are uh, roadmaps or blueprints for environmental actions. Uh, with regards to climate change, the institution I work for has participated at uh, depth uh, in developing the National Climate Change Response Strategy, uh, which is basically a first-line uh, policy document uh, detailing how uh, the government uh, plans or intends to respond the threats and the opportunities of climate change. What I have learned in the past six days has been uh, an opportunity for me to stir up new thinking in the way that uh, one, our communities have an inherent potential to build their own resilience towards any manner of threats, climate change included. And what we as the regulators or the policy makers or the government, what we need to do is to look uh, more closer uh, into what the communities are having in terms of uh, knowledge, in terms of assets, and work from that point. Because the, the, the ability to adapt uh, is inherent down there, and uh, uh, the only gap is to exploit that ability. There are a number of interventions that uh, we have to undertake in order to ensure that the climate change does not adversely or negatively affect the, our livelihoods. Some of it, these interventions are like strengthening or improving the livelihood systems that we have at the moment or getting into new supportive livelihood systems. For Garissa, pastoralism is the main livelihood system that we have. So it will mean like in getting into better livelihood systems. If uh, we find that uh, livestock is the most affecting, maybe we can go for breeds of livestock that can survive better with the ever-changing climate. The other way will be to get into other supportive activities 
like crop farming, doing a bit of business activities and training uh, that ensure that people are able to survive when the climate change affects their livelihood. In a new uh, constitution dispensation, we have two levels of government, the national and the county government. The county government has a lot of opportunities for supporting climate change adaptation interventions at that level. Because uh, one of it could be in terms of uh, real interventions that are taken by the various ministries according to the mandate that it has been given, and the other could be in form of laws that could be passed by the county assembly. These laws then would facilitate the implementation and structures that are supposed to be put in place to support climate change. Through the Ministry of Planning, we are continuously doing community-based planning with the people. A participatory senior planning is actually a form of community-based and participatory kind of planning process that which now really produces and direct uh, interventions that are going to support adaptive interventions at the community level. Because the advisories that are produced as a result of analyzing the weather situation or utilizing the weather information actually direct touch on those areas that they need to be improved or those opportunities that are there and that people need to get to take advantage of. Zamani, watu walikuwa wanafuata mifugo tu. Walikuwa huko. Watu wachache ndio walikuwa wanapelekanga watoto wao watoto wao shule. Siku hizi watoto wote at least 78% watoto wanaenda shule. Sasa hii sisi tunajitanga agro pastoralist because tumeingia kwa farming na bandi tu kuna mifugo. This intervention has been implemented by help and care in a Garissa county and it is in the process of implementation and uh, according to the experience that I got from it I think it's an innovative way and a very good approach that which needs to be scaled up so that uh, climate change does not really adversely affect the livelihoods of the people in uh, Garissa county and uh, perhaps other areas and any other areas in Kenya. My wish is to influence planning processes so that this kind of interpretation of this data happens everywhere. So this model that is happening in Garissa can go across the country so that every farming community, whenever it is their time for planning, they are empowered so that we stop uh, these major losses uh, that uh, we know our farmers suffer because of uninformed uh, decision-making processes.